Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing an introductory level problem from geometry, which if you're really, really new to geometry, you've just learned how to you know, mark the angles and this basics of similarity, congruency, triangle angle chasing. This is a great problem for you. And I suggest you try it out for a minimum of 20 minutes. Ideally an hour to an hour and a half, though not more than two hours. If you'd like to go along with us, give us a go for the next 10 minutes. And now let's begin. So what do we have? We have the height from A, let's call this A, A1. And I'm just like marking them so that I'm going to have an easier time saying what is the angle. BB1, CC1. BB1 is the angle bisector. CC1 is the midpoint of a, B. Like C1 is the midpoint of A, B. And it was proved that this triangle, we're assuming this triangle that's formed by them, has a positive area. In other words, it means that these three lines don't all pass through the same point. So, assuming this, prove this triangle isn't equilateral. Now, a big question when I saw this problem was, wait, you usually have to prove that something is the case. Now, how do I prove something is not the case? And that's the big question. That's the first question here. And the answer is, what you're doing in this problem is you're saying, okay, I'm going to, instead of proving something is not the case, an easy way to, a simple sort of way to go about doing that is to say, let me assume this is the case. And assuming it is the case, let me reach something that is impossible or false. Let me reach a contradiction to something in the problem statements. And here we would do that by assume, let's assume that this triangle it has the is equilateral, which means this triangle X, Y, Z has angles that are 60, 60, and 60. Or if we draw a bigger diagram. We're going to have that in this triangle. So the height from A, angle bisector of BAC, of actually ABC, and here at the midpoint, say that this triangle they formed, XYZ, ha actually has the angles that are 60, 60, 60. So I said XYZ. Let's do this X, Y, and Z. So now, what I would invite you to do, if you didn't get this far, is to, like the sort of assumption, the thing that you need to do, is to now go ahead and try to calculate some angles, like try to push the problem further. And here's the next step. And do this actually for the next five, 10 minutes, right? And the next step says, okay, let me now see, given all of these are 60, I might have some angles. Let me see which ones I get. And for me, the immediate one that I get is that this angle is 60, and so is this angle right here. So I have that the angle BZ, A1, so this angle is 60 degrees. And now this is very cool, why? Well, it's very cool because now beta half needs to be 30, because this is a 90, 60, 30, 90. I now know this angle is 30, which also gives me that this angle right here is 30 as well, right? So beta is now, we know, 60. And given this is 60, this angle right here is also 30. And now again, I'm going to invite you to pause for another five, 10 minutes and look at the problem and see if there's anything else you may notice. And for me, the answer is, well, now I notice, okay, 30, 60, so this triangle with the angles 30 and 60 has some interesting properties. So it means that, for example, in this triangle, A, A1, B, I have, if the length of this side is X, the length of this whole side is 2X, of A, B is 2X, the hypotenuse. But given C1 is the midpoint, that means length of this is X and the length of this is X. And now, given this is equal to this, 
is equal to x. Now I have BA1 is equal to BC1. Now what does that mean for us? I invite you again to pause for three to five minutes and try to push the problem further. And the answer is, well, what this means really is that, now given we have BA1, BA1 is BC1, I have if I connect these two, I'll have this angle is equal to this angle. However, what is this angle right here? Well, given this, well, like, what are these angles? Well, given this one is 60, we have this one is 60 and 60, because these two need to be equal, they need to be some k and k, and then, because k plus k plus 60 is 180, that means that k needs to be, I mean, then 2k is 120, and then k is 60. Or in other words, you could also have done this the midpoint of the hypotenuse, so I know that this angle is equal to this one, and you could have figured it out that way as well. And now we know also that CA1 is equal to BA1, and that's also, you know, that's interesting at the very minimum. So this is the midpoint. It, actually, it touches these sides, and now we need to look further. And here I invite you actually to pause for three to five more minutes and see what else do you see. You know, because this is an ad thing about you trying out different stuff in a problem and seeing, you know, what works, what doesn't work. And the answer for me is the next thing I see is, wait a second, this is 60, I have this angle is 60, right? I sort of think I've maxed out here, right? This is equal to this, like, how will I ever use that? And I go, okay, well, this is 60, because this is 60, and this is 30, so it means that this angle right here is 90. So we have that CC1, is perpendicular to AB. And we also have that C1B is C1A. Now what does this tell us? And why if you pause for five minutes and try to figure out what this tells us? And the answer is well you have C1A is equal to C1B. You have C C1C is equal to C1C. And the angle, how should I call it? I'll call it C C1A is equal to the angle CC1B is equal to 90, right? And now from here, we have from the side angle side congruency rule, we get that the triangles C1, CA is congruence to the triangle C1, CB. And what do I get from here? Well, I get that CA is equal to CB. So now given this angle is 60, that means that this whole angle is equal to this one, is equal to 60, so this is 30. And now, with that, what does that mean for the triangle ABC? Well, it means that this triangle ABC is in fact equilateral. So we've got to the conclusion that if XYZ is equilateral, then so is ABC. Like ABC has to be equilateral. Now, is there any problem with this? And the answer is, well, if everything is equilateral, then this is at 90 as well. So then, because B1 is that a height, a, a, like BB1 is a height, AA1 is a height, CC1 is a height, so they don't form a triangle, they actually pass through the same point, which would imply, now this implies now that ABC is equilateral, which implies that X is the same as Y is the same as Z, which implies all of these points are the same, and then this gives us a contradiction. This is also a sign, I think, for a contradiction, this thing right here. Not this is being circled around. It's like a collision, like boom, boom, pew, contradiction. At least I think that's what it is. And now we write, we say, our assumption that the triangle XYZ is a triangle with positive area and 
like we know our assumption that this triangle XYZ that has positive area is also equilateral has led us to the conclusion that it's not a triangle with positive area. And given our assumption has led us to a contradiction, like it can't both be with positive area and without positive area, that means that our assumption was false. And so the opposite of it is true, which is that X, Y, Z cannot be equilateral. Now this finishes up our problem and as always, thanks for problem solving.